Okay, so we're going to look at uh, Hurricane Sandy now as our example of our um, atmospheric hazard event. So we just quickly put that in up here. Hurricane Sandy, uh, which occurred back in 2012, October 2012, to be precise, uh, and was a Category 3 hurricane. What we're going to do, as we do with most of our natural hazards, is look at the effects and the responses to this tropical storm. And we obviously split those by primary and secondary effects or short-term and long-term responses. One of the other videos on the channel looks at how you could answer a question that might ask you to assess the extent to which other primary impacts or secondary impacts are more significant uh, in the event of a natural storm or to what extent a long-term response is more important. So it's important to know the difference between those. What we've got here in the middle is our kind of hurricane spiral, that you know, uh, sort of typical appearance of a hurricane that's spiraling inwards to that calm central eye that we see from satellites. What we've got in the middle here, okay, is our winds converging from two directions, which combine with the Coriolis force causes the spinning of hurricanes. And then we've also got our 27 degrees Celsius, which we know is that ocean temperature required. For, for tropical storms to form, hence why they generally only form between the tropics. Remember, without the Coriolis force, however, these storms don't spin, so they're not actually found on the equator because there isn't a Coriolis force at that point. Uh, another thing that hurricanes need to form is a low vertical wind shear. So remember, that's when the wind speeds are equal uh, as we go up in levels through the atmosphere, so winds close to the ground surface are of a similar speed to winds in the higher atmosphere. Uh, otherwise, the clouds are kind of ripped apart as they form, which means that we don't get any latent heat being released and uh, we don't get any fuel for the hurricane. Now, we're going to start off by looking at the primary effects. So the first one we need to consider is the number of deaths shown by our rest in peace sign here. We have 286 deaths. Okay. Now, relatively small amount for a hurricane of such strength for Sandy, but we've got to remember that this hit the coast of New Jersey in the United States of America. We know that's a high income country, so it was actually relatively well prepared, uh, buildings were well protected, and the response was uh, highly effective. Okay. 200,000 buildings were damaged or destroyed though, either by high winds or by flooding caused by the storm surge created by Hurricane Sandy. That storm surge was really quite significant. It actually pushed one metre of sand up onto um, seaside town. You know, it's quite a nice easy thing to remember here. Hurricane Sandy hit the coast of New Jersey. One of the major towns on the coast of New Jersey is called Seaside. And Hurricane Sandy actually managed to push one metre of sand up into the streets of the town, burying kind of cars um, and pavements. It also destroyed the, uh, the pier. Okay, that was at Seaside Town, and on that pier were rides and a fun fair that had been there for over 99 years. On top of that, it left over 8 million people without electricity. So there are primary responses. Those things caused immediately as a result of uh, the uh, hurricane. You know, some really quite significant ones in there. You know, the 286 deaths, you've got to think about the amount of people that would have uh, meant losing loved ones, maybe children being orphaned because their parents were killed. You know, that's quite a significant impact. Uh, in terms of secondary impacts, what we're going to actually do is categorise those now into economic, environmental and social impacts. This allows us to show our knowledge in a little bit more detail, not only just repeating facts and figures, but actually being able to categorise them. And Hurricane Sandy it hit a very well-developed area of the, of the world in New Jersey, and it caused over $50 billion worth of damage. On top of that, it caused over 630 oil spills, okay, which obviously had dramatic both economic consequences for the businesses operating in that area, but also environmental impacts of oil contaminating water uh, and killing wildlife. We also saw things such as post-traumatic stress, uh, be diagnosed in survivors who had lost loved ones, had seen their businesses completely destroyed. And then we also had other health issues caused by mould developing in, um, in homes that had been flooded by the storm surge or by the heavy rainfall. Okay, and obviously that causes problems such as uh, respiratory problems, breathing difficulties uh, due to the mould infested houses. Moving on then to the responses. What we've got to remember is that uh, 
unlike most times when we think about a natural disaster, we start talking about the uh, short-term response of international aid. That wasn't really necessary in this case. Obviously, here's in New Jersey in the United States, uh, the majority of the money donated to sort of uh, in the immediate aftermath came from the American government and the New Jersey authorities, who actually between them donated over 5.6 billion dollars. Okay, that money would obviously have been invested in things such as providing clean, safe drinking water to survivors so they didn't have to drink anything that was potentially contaminated, which we know from other case studies uh, leads to the spread of things uh, like cholera and other waterborne diseases. The Red Cross provided temporary accommodation to 74,000 people, providing them with immediate shelter so that they could find protection from uh, the last remnants of the storm as it passed over. And this was vitally important in making sure that people therefore weren't staying in homes that were dangerous. It also gave authorities enough time as well to check those buildings and deem whether or not they were safe for inhabitants to return. We also know that they had an early warning system in place. The early warning system in, uh, was uh, used in computer models. Uh, basically, they used drones and satellites to collect data from the hurricane as it's forming, and then they were able to predict, using those supercomputers, the potential path that it was going to go. In some cases, this isn't always accurate, but when it is, it allows people to get an early warning system out, which then allows them to evacuate and prepare. Um, for, for the storm. You know, we're not going to be able to do a huge amount in terms of reducing damage it's going to cause and the risk it's going to be posed. We can, as we see with the free peach video that's on the channel, protect from hurricanes, but actually it's more important that we manage to prepare and get people out of the area before the, um, before the storm hits, which is going to be the major reason why we can save lives. In terms of the long-term responses, what they did was they created a risk map. Hmm. This basically looked at uh, the area of New Jersey that was hit by Hurricane Sandy and looked at areas that were particularly damaged by, for example, the storm surge. So areas that had been built on that were below sea level, very close to sea level, and therefore easily flooded. These areas were therefore designated as of high risk and were not rebuilt in or not used for uh, things like residential properties. They also rebuilt the pier and combined that with a massive advertising uh, campaign. The concern had been that the, one of the secondary impacts of the disaster would be a massive drop in tourism for the other. But the combination of the rebuilding and modernising of the pier and the advertising campaign actually meant a 1% increase in tourist income uh, for the area, area in previous years. This shows that there was a highly effective response. This money would have then been ploughed back into the area in terms of helping it make more earthquake-proof buildings and redeveloping itself in the aftermath of the incident. On top of that, the US government provided tax relief. Uh, they reduced the tax that survivors had to pay. This allowed them to invest more heavily in rebuilding their homes, restarting or redeveloping their businesses so that the area could economically recover from the situation.